very excited. Welcome to our brown bag lunch discussion. Uh, somebody just asked me when they walked in, where's my brown bag? Uh, this is a Republican uh, thing. Uh, bring your own bag. Not <laughs> individual <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> it, it's a very exciting time uh, that we're in right now. A very perilous time, I guess. But uh, it gives me just a great honor and a privilege to uh, introduce our guest here today. Uh, Scott Walker has done an amazing job in Milwaukee County. Eight years, I believe it is, without a property tax increase. He's reduced the debt by 10% uh, in the county. He's reduced the size of government. He is doing everything that I want to see somebody do as governor. So it gives me a, just a great honor. I'm, I'm honored and very privileged to introduce to you the next governor of the state of Wisconsin. Thanks for coming out. And now Terry and I are playing video games up here. Uh, Mark Halverson, who actually grew up in Wauwatosa, where I live, um, asked us to, to, uh, to record a little bit to share for some of the listeners as well. But Terry, I want to thank you. Thanks uh, for opening up uh, your place of employment. Thanks for the jobs you provide in this community. Thanks for your leadership. And uh, I look forward to working with you uh, even more in the future. Uh, we're, we're just thrilled to have uh, everybody come out here today. This is, I think, in the last year, year and a half, this is about my 20th visit to the Chippewa Valley. Um, so I, I've gotten to the point where I actually know uh, the difference between not only Eau Claire and Chippewa Falls, but I know where Altoona is, and I know it's not everywhere else uh, in this area. And I was in Altoona last night. Uh, this morning we started out early uh, with the NFIB, uh, speaking with small business owners from northwestern Wisconsin that we're meeting over at the plaza. Uh, then I met with the statewide uh, conference at the Tavern League, had their spring conference. Uh, we made a stop, actually, at a, a good friend down in the south end of Eau Claire, uh, Becky and Charlie Ballas, and Becky's in, in, in poor health. And so I went by her home and said hi, and then I'm glad to be over here uh, before we head back uh, south for some more work this afternoon. Uh, but it's good to be by. I'm actually familiar with this stretch because long before running for governor, um, and I know Dave Zine's mom is here, but for years I've been riding Harleys and a lot of times with Dave, and we stop at the dealership just up the way on, on the other side of the, of the uh, radio station, and then I occasionally come over for fish fries at the, uh, uh, over at the club right next door, uh, so I'm familiar with this area. And um, believe me, as governor, I'm going to be familiar coming here again and again and again, because I think it's important for the leaders of this state to know that one in the state is not the same as the other. Well, we share a lot of common concerns, and when we all love Wisconsin, uh, obviously different parts of the state reflect different issues. It's part of the reason why we're here today as well. Let me spend, I'm just going to spend a couple minutes telling you a little bit about who I am, for some who don't know me, uh, and a little bit about uh, where we'd like to take the state. And then I'm going to spend uh, the rest of the time here at noon opening up the questions, because that's really what the brown bag is all about. It's a chance to, to hear from folks. But uh, I grew up, I, I live in Wauwatosa. Uh, I have two uh, sons. My wife and I have uh, a freshman and sophomore in high school at Wauwatosa East High School. Uh, and I'm proud right now to be the Milwaukee County Executive, as, as Terry alluded to. But I, I grew up down in Delaware. It's a town of about 8,000 in Walworth County near the state line, uh, the state of Illinois, that is. Uh, and uh, a lot of who I am today comes from, from growing up there. Um, certainly my parents, my dad's not long since retired, but was a preacher down there. Uh, my mother worked part-time and raised my brother and I. They were a tremendous influence on me. And when I was in high school, I was involved in sports at Delvin Deerian High School, and so I learned a lot about teamwork there. Uh, proud to say I was in Scouts, and I'm an Eagle Scout, uh, so I learned a lot about leadership from that. And years ago, uh, when I was uh, going between my junior and senior in high school, I was honored to be one of the young men selected to go to the American Legion's Badger Boys State Program over in Ripon. In fact, I was one of the two that went to Washington on behalf of the whole state. And uh, that taught me a lot, not so much about politics or government, it taught me that too, but more importantly it taught me about public service. You see that the veterans that were part of that program taught us that it was important to serve others. Uh, and that really left a, a lasting mark on me. Probably though one of the most significant influences in my life, uh, most endearing to this day, was my grandma. Uh, my grandmother uh, was raised during the Great Depression. Uh, so like a lot of people in her generation, she was very frugal. Uh, in fact, my grandmother became a widow in 1974 when my grandfather passed away. 
And up until about two years ago, right before the last few months before she passed away, uh, she still lived in her own home, made her own meals, still showed up at not only my things, but my kids' uh, activities and everything else. And she always found a way, even as a widow, to work enough odd jobs and do enough things to pay the bills. Um, and I like to think I got a lot of that being frugal from her. In fact, when we were kids, my brother and I used to joke when we'd go to stay with her during the summer for a month, that we'd go to McDonald's, and she had enough coupons that I swear they paid us to eat there. <laughs> that group. Uh, but along the way, I, I picked up a lot of that from her. And so much of what I do in my own life, as well as in government as a leader, uh, comes from that sense of being frugal. Now, I call myself frugal. To that, my wife just called me cheap. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the reality is I, I still drive the same Saturn. I bought back in the fall of 1997. It's got over 100,000 miles on it. It still works, so I still drive. Um, my uh, kids are teenagers. I mentioned a couple years ago we were buying uh, shoes for sports at the outlet store in Johnson Creek, and they were so embarrassed that they offered to buy me a new pair of shoes because I had tennis shoes that were about a decade old. Uh, and I said, when teenagers are willing to give some of their own money up, you know you're in trouble. And, and the thing that ties into what we're doing here today is back when I started working um, at IBM to pay for college, and then later at the Red Cross when I worked there for years, then in the assembly, and even today, uh, I still pack a lunch. Same lunch, uh, two ham and cheese sandwiches with mayo on wheat. Um, and I do that because I like to save money for other things in life. You know, hopefully put a little money away for my kids' education and other things. And, and I like to think that there are a lot of other people around, like me around the state. Whether you pack a brown bag lunch or you pack a lunch bucket or, or you do other things in your own life and your own business to save a little bit of money, I think a lot of us have that same sense of brown bag common sense. And I just wish the government would do a little bit more like the rest of us do to save money in our own lives. Uh, that's why I'm in this race for governor. I, I, I love this state. I believe in Wisconsin. Uh, but I also believe that this governor and this legislature, at least the majority right now in the legislature, have taken this state down the wrong path. I think it's time we apply some of that brown bag common sense that we all have across the state and put it in place in government so that government stands on the side of the people, not on the side of the powerful special interest of mass. Uh, <laughs> I've got uh, what I like to think are three very simple principles that you see that we put on our, our bags. We thought it was a clever way of sharing that message around the state. And you've seen some, probably some of the ads you've been running here and in other parts of the state as well. But I just want to repeat them. One, my grandmother would love this. Don't spend more money than you have. Wouldn't it be nice if government at all levels said, don't spend more money than you have? Secondly, smaller government is better government. And third, this is really important these days, people People like all of you here, people like Terry at this business right here, people create jobs, not the government. <laughs> so the problem I see all the way from this president to the governor to even the mayor of Milwaukee who's running for governor is they all think that government creates jobs. Government doesn't create jobs. Government creates an environment that's either better or worse, positive or negative. And I've seen for too long the environment in this state from our government is that the government has been standing in the way of business. About a month ago, I spoke to the statewide Chamber of Commerce and started out a very clear plan, a six-point plan to get this state working again. And the premise of that is not to have government create those jobs, but rather six points that get government out of the way of business so that the cost of doing business is less in the state and in turn, then businesses, like this one right here, can create more jobs, not the government. It's like, uh, of those points, it's things like cutting taxes, reducing the regulation burden, lowering the litigation burden, providing for a world-class and accountable education system. Those are all things that make it easier for the private sector to create jobs in the state. Now, to show you how serious I was at that time and still today, I said, if I'm elected as your next governor, and we have a chance to enact that bold plan, uh, we're going to set a target out there. We're not going to just talk the talk. We're going to walk it. We're going to say, if we can enact that plan, if I get to serve as your governor, by the end of my first term, we will create a minimum of 250,000 new jobs in this state. <laughs> now, you would have thought I dropped a nuclear bomb on Madison when I said that. I mean, the liberals went crazy. The media went wild. Even the other Republican, main Republican running for governor said it can't be done. But I got a little experience with the naysayers. You see, eight years ago, as Terry alluded to, eight years ago, you know, I was watching 